What is up you guys? Welcome to Illumination Lab. My name is Justin and today I'll be going over this AI tool named Meshi. In this video we'll explore the capabilities of this AI tool using both their text to 3D and image to 3D features. Then to wrap it up I'll show you some renders I made importing these assets into Cinema 4D. I'm inside for this one. This is going to be a fun one today. So without further delay, let's get into it. All right, so hopping into the Meshi website here, I found this one here recently. What's kind of unique about these guys is they have a few different ways to kind of render out your assets here. So they have a text to 3D, image to 3D, and then they also have AI texturing. They have image to uh, voxels as well. So we'll kind of explore that. And what's unique about these guys is they do have a realistic cartoon anime look as well too. So uh, when you render out these assets, if you're going for a specific style, that's always an option as well too. And so we'll just kind of play around with this website here and I'll show you kind of what they provide in an entirety. So going over to their showcase section, it looks like this is a combination of a few assets that different creators made. And then it looks like they're able to kind of export that out and uh, anyone can kind of download these as well. And then they do have a tutorial section. So I would imagine this is either how to import some of these assets or how to uh, make your assets a little bit better within their software program here and then of course they have a document section pricing section so we'll hop into our account here so right off the bat this is what your account looks like so they have a discover section asset section and it looks like this is their marketplace as well and then it has a tutorial section um, text the 3d here and then a few others ai texturing image to 3d text to voxels so they have a few different tool kits here and uh, that you can play with but we'll start with the text the 3d feature here so what i'm going to do with this one i'm going to put in a futuristic car here into our prompt and then I'm also going to select cartoon and then we'll just generate this out. Looks like uh, this does cost about five credits and it looks like they give us about 200 to start out with. And so immediately here we are greeted with four different cars here. So I'm going to go with this one here and it looks like you can refine this. So I'll just go ahead and select refine and it looks like it's it's working on that here so and then over to the right here it looks like there's a few different settings or different texture settings to play with so we'll kind of dive into that when this is done so all right so pulling up our car it looks like yeah it's <laughs> it's a little rough it looks like it's a medium texture quality here so and then of course kind of going over to the side here we kind of toggle a lot of these settings and then you have display settings your texture settings as well and it looks like you kind of play around with both the roughness of the texture and the metallicness of the texture as well too so um, that's pretty cool and, and very standard and then you have your hdri both the strength and then you can toggle the background and then kind of rotate this hdri to kind of see what it looks like and then you can kind of change your mesh here as well and then it looks like you're able to export this out into their marketplace and it looks like they give you about 50 credits for that i'm not sure how much the credits are as far as dollar amount goes but i'm sure it's it's somewhat fair for what they're asking for so um so yeah, that's pretty much it for this car here. And it does look like there's a setting over here where we could kind of change the texture richness here. And so maybe in our next render here, we'll kind of play around with that. So 
But anyways, let's jump over to our other section here. This image the 3D. This is kind of interesting. I kind of want to see what this is able to do. Uh, so it looks like you drag and drop in the image here uh, to kind of upload it and it kind of does its thing. So I'm going to jump over to Pexels here and find a picture. And I'm going to actually challenge this. I'm going to see what an AI tool can do when it comes to a tree. Uh, a tree is going to be pretty complex to make, I would imagine, especially with all the different branches and leaves. So we're just going to upload this and select generate here. Oh, it looks like we do have to name this. So I'll just <laughs> name our tree here and then select generate. And then right off the bat here, yeah, that's <laughs> that's our tree there. So, um, yeah, that's uh, you can tell it it did try for sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it looks like it outlined our tree. It took out a lot of our leaves, and then it sure did try with this bench as well too. So I know that is something that was a little bit harder, but. It's kind of interesting to see what it came out with. I would imagine in the future, they would maybe have some sort of ability to kind of look up what the image is and kind of make a little bit more uh, better estimates when it comes to calculating this out, maybe identifying, okay, this is a tree. This is maybe the dimensions and uh, what it should look like. But other than that, we're kind of uh, stuck with this so far. So. But anyways, pretty interesting image to 3D here. We'll just hop back into the text to 3D here, and then we'll try something a little bit different. I'm just going to type in spaceship here and select realistic and select generate here, and hopefully we get a realistic ship. And immediately we're greeted with these four. So I'm just going to select this one here. I'm just going to change it to uh, high richness. And let's see what we can get out of that. And selecting it. And uh, I would say it's a little bit better than their car, but I wouldn't say it's uh, realistic at all. But uh, but yeah, I would say it's a little bit higher quality than what we were playing around with with our car. And then, of course, over here, we can kind of play around with the different settings to kind of adjust our textures here. Of course, the roughness here. and then also the metallicness. So um, again, that's pretty common for a lot of AI tools kind of be being able to adjust that. And then it's also kind of cool to see uh, how light is gonna interact. And then let me change these mesh settings here. Let me hit apply and see what happens here. All right, so nothing happened here. So <laughs> it looks like our vertices or our faces didn't change. So I'm sure it did something, but we're just not seeing it. I'm sure if we kind of go into the model itself, maybe we can see some sort of difference. But other than that, <laughs> we just get our spaceship here. So but yeah, for the most part, pretty cool. I would say it's a lot better than our car. We'll exit out over here and then in the discover section, it is pretty cool. It looks like these are a few different uh, renders from our uh, AI prompt here. And so uh, they seem to be in a lot better detail than what we got. But of course, I put in a very simple prompt, but I'm sure you could kind of hone in a little bit more and kind of get more of a realistic or stylized look. But yeah, there's a lot of really cool ones here that uh, <laughs> some folks made. But what I'll do now is I'll export two different assets I made within the text of 3D and we'll bring into Cinema 4D 
and then uh, just kind of wrap this up here so All right, so hopping into Cinema 4D, I made this astronaut here, and then I also made this alien. Uh, what's kind of cool here is in the Redshift render view, you can see that it is uh, a lot higher quality than what our viewport suggests. So that's pretty cool there, especially since I was thinking it's not going to be the best quality, but in the render view, it, it definitely looks a lot better so i'll give it that for sure so while i'm just kind of going over some of the stuff i'm just going to make this scene here quick with our astronaut here and so i know when it comes to different ai tools ai in general is very divisive in general a lot of people really are digging ai where a lot of people are not especially when it jeopardizes uh someone's uh, <laughs> when it jeopardizes someone's job and so i think especially when it comes to artists it can be very detrimental as far as the feel goes in general but in a more positive light i would say that ai provides a service almost similar to almost like tracing paper essentially so what's what tracing paper is is you can essentially outline something without having the technical ability to do so and so you see this especially with younger kids being able to kind of trace or if someone's trying to learn how to draw they will uh, trace something out and so that allows you to kind of be creative and create something and not have to be very judgmental when it comes to the overall look or the ending or the the finished piece essentially and so it kind of creates a, a positive feedback when someone's done tracing and it's a little bit higher quality than what they may be able to do by themselves and so i feel like a lot of these ai tools kind of provide that same service especially to beginning 3d artists no matter if you're using Cinema 4D, Blender, or any other 3D modeling tool, most of these programs are going to be very, very daunting uh, originally, especially if, if you don't know how to use a lot of these different tools. And so I feel like someone starting out with some sort of 3D software program, they can be strongly discouraged to kind of stop or give up just because there's a very technical aspect if they do give it a shot it is very plain or very uh, beginner-esque and so i feel like ai tools can kind of give them something to work off of or be able to import that they are somewhat passionate about and then they're able to create something that is a little bit higher quality than what they may have started out with and so i see it as more as again a tool tracing paper essentially to be able to kind of create something without having to be frustrated or judgmental about the overall piece and so i feel like this kind of adds that positive reinforcement that hey look at what i created even though i didn't make everything within the scene i did kind of create this scene in general so it's a really great starting point especially for either a younger individual or someone that is just trying to figure out the program here so but other than that i can essentially see both ways of people how they kind of view it some people don't like it because you know it kind of lacks creativity or kind of takes away the the creativity from a specific artist but on the opposite side, I can see where a lot of either 3D artists or artists in general can kind of use it to kind of be a little bit more efficient, especially when it comes to something that is repetitive, like a lot of trees, like in the forest or a lot of flowers. And so instead of having to individually set those up, you can use tools like this to kind of make sure that you're a little bit more efficient. And so I would say that if you are an individual with a deadline, 
I'm sure that this can be useful. Um, maybe not now, but sometime in the future when the quality is a little bit better in general. But yeah, I would say maybe look at this as more as, as a tool versus as a replacement in general. And I think overall people are always going to be a lot more creative than any sort of algorithm or machine can produce. There is a quality when it comes to the human touch that you can definitely tell if something is created by a individual or created by an AI program. And of course, once you get better at, you know, 3D software programs or just modeling in general, you can be a lot more confident to either steer away from AI models or um, have a lot more flexibility when it comes to creating your models or being able to say, hey, yeah, I created this entire scene. I went from absolutely nothing to, you know, this, this whole elaborate scene or this whole figure in general. And so again, I try to look at the positive aspect of it hopefully it can be a very cool uh, resourceful tool and i'm sure within the next you know five to ten years it's just going to only get better and better and so instead of shying away from it or fearing it i would say there is an element where you can embrace but i always will uh, recommend applying yourself and applying the human touch to uh, whatever you do whether it's artistically or not because uh, there's a there's an element to that that uh, that is uh, definitely important and what we shouldn't steer away from as a society in general but but other than that that was that was pretty much it for the software program meshi and so what i found what was pretty interesting i'm not sure if you guys have ran into this when i was rendering out some of these images here our astronaut uh, scene was a little blurry what was interesting about that is my render settings for redshift was the same for both scenes one was kind of blurry where one was not and so i really haven't played too much when it comes to ai assets and so i'm just curious if that is a product of the actual asset itself where redshift is trying to render it out and it can't just you know calculate or focus uh, on it exactly but i've ran into that a couple times even with playing around with my camera as well it just kind of came out blurry i checked a lot of my settings as well and so i was just kind of curious if any of you guys have noticed that if you do play around with different ai models but essentially that was pretty much it for our demo here i just want to kind of share another tool similar to the vmod video i did i just want to share with you guys essentially what tools are out there and in no capacity at all am i affiliated with any of these ai tools but i just kind of come across them and let you guys know what is out there if you ever want to use it yourself or if you know an artist that is kind of starting out in their 3D journey, definitely let them know that that is a opportunity for them to kind of use and uh, maybe that will kind of encourage them to continue on with their 3D journey and not be discouraged so much from what they render out originally. But other than that, that's pretty much the end of the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. I'm kind of curious to see what you guys think about this. If you want me to try out something or explore a different program or a different scene in general, definitely let me know and we will work on that. But other than that, that was pretty much it. You guys have a good rest of your day and I'll see you on the next one.